Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and welcome to the channel. If you have never seen our videos before, we welcome you. So today's video is going to be an in-depth analysis and cost breakdown of a recent garden house that we built. I get constant questions about this for our garden houses. Literally every day people ask, how much does this cost? how much would something like this cost me um, I am aware that many people watch the channel will be looking to do this as a DIY project to build themselves and some will be looking for someone like us to build it for them so this will help both of you as you can see this is the space that we are going to be constructing this is at the back of the garden things that are very important to bear in mind when you're building something like this is access to the plot or site so fortunately for us this has the best access you could probably ask for it has an alleyway which we can drive our vehicle down as you can see the alleyway is quite what large we can actually get a skip down here the skip was a little bit of a squeeze I think that's the biggest we could really get down here we couldn't get the concrete truck down here unfortunately but the a skip truck we could get down here So as we go through step by step, I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of what we spent on materials and a rough idea as well of the quantities of materials that we used. And I will keep tallying these figures up as we go through the video. And by the end of the video, we should have a full costing of what we spent um, to build this house. So the first thing, now this is an optional, um, obviously we had good access so we decided to hire a digger. It will take you a lot less time to do it and essentially you would save time on labour if you're paying for labour to do this if you have a digger because you can basically get the dig done a lot quicker. So I hired a digger from I believe it was Travis Perkins and what I had to pay was £800 deposit. You pay the deposit and then you get the machine delivered. Once you're finished with the machine, depending on how long you use it for, you will get charged and they will deduct that charge from the deposit that you've paid and you receive the balance. So in my case, I had the machine for about three days um, so basically I get charged one week's hire and the charge for the hire including the delivery was 331 pounds and eight pence so once they collected the machine a few days later I was given a refund of 468 pounds and 92 pence so that's typically how they do it um, obviously you can shop around uh, but I felt that was a pretty much standard price for a dig like this this is a mini excavator there is a slightly smaller one obviously there are bigger ones but for this you wouldn't need anything bigger than this um, the smaller one was very much not very much difference in price but the main concerns is the boom arm the reach of the boom arm was shorter so I thought it made sense to get a longer reach especially when you've got awkward areas to dig anybody can use one of these to be honest this was the first time I've actually ever used an excavator and it was pretty much simple to use you just do need to be careful obviously if you're digging in a space like this you have to consider how you get in and out of the space so you don't get stuck but you know you do have a week with the machine so you can take your time and, um, and get the dig done so we used the excavator to dig the trenches you saw in the beginning there were three different buckets that came with it different sizes and so on so you can see skips now skips is a cost that um, the customer actually provided the skips 
but generally speaking a skip of this size which is an eight yard skip in around London you will pay somewhere in the region of 270 pounds for a skip so the foundations took about two skips I believe of soil and I think we ended up taking a third skip after that so I think it was about three skips in total that we've taken for the job so three skips at 270 pounds it needs to be considered for a foundation this size we also need to take dirt out from the center of the foundation as well the middle part where we're going to be um, pouring a concrete slab so we need to remove some soil from there as well so we're just leveling out for our concrete which will be arriving uh, later that day and that brings us on to the next cost so concrete there are many ways you can do concrete you can hire a cement mixer and mix it yourself uh, we've done that on the previous video mainly the reason why we did that is because of access again we had no access besides going through the house so we ended up you know carrying buckets of sand and using a cement mixer and mixing it ourselves another option you do have if you haven't got good access is often is a pump hiring a company that will provide a pump truck but they can be very expensive so usually you will have to hire the cement provider who will turn up with a truck and then you need to hire a separate truck for a pump the company that we used for um, our concrete I believe they're called mix mate something along those lines I'll try and put their uh, details in the description they actually have an all-in-one truck so their truck actually has the pump built in to the cement mixer now if you want to use that pump you do have to pay for it I believe they charge about 350 pounds um, extra if you want to use their their truck they had another service which we ad ended up using which is they have a motorized sort of wheelbarrow which you'll see in a moment um, you do need to tell them that you want it in advance so that you make sure that you've got it when they deliver the cement and I think we paid about 40 pounds for the use of that and the driver um, basically you know transports the concrete and and dumps it for us so for our trench concrete which is to fill in all around the outside where we're going to do our block work that cost us 750 pounds for the concrete so that included the use of the uh, dumper machine as well as extra time because it did take us over the allocated time and once you go over time then they start to charge you so it was a bit expensive um, but materials like concrete and timber have risen a lot in recent months so um, prices you might have had six months ago will be definitely out of date So you just see here we're just preparing for the trench in and we're ready to go we had to make a bit of makeshift for shuttering at the last moment where we had some bits of soil break down on us so here's the truck that I was telling you about and uh, we had a lovely guy who was really really helpful and um, he helped us with the pour and basically you can see the truck here so this was an extra I think 40 pounds and mainly it, it was better to use it than using wheel, wheelbarrows because of the distance his truck couldn't get down the alleyway and it's a fair trek down to the other end of the alleyway and it would just take him too long so he suggested that you know we do it with this and it made sense so you can see we just literally sat around and let him get on with it so we pour our concrete up to the just to the tip of those uh, pegs that we put in and that will help us to get a nice level foundation
So you can see the next day our concrete is dry and I've also removed some soil from the center area. And now we're ready to start laying our foundation bricks. So we're using engineering bricks here and we're going to take it up three courses. The aim really is to try to get about two courses above ground level. It was a bit of a tight one here mainly because the curb at the back or the, the road at the back was quite high. So we kind of got it close um, to the back. We got it about one brick. But there's all concrete in that area so there's not really any soil um, that will you know penetrate from the bottom of the bricks. So engineering bricks cost us. Um, we bought 280 bricks to do the foundation. This is a six by four foundation or just a little bit wider than six by four. 280 bricks and the price for the bricks we paid were 54 pence. So that's a total of 151 pounds 20. Obviously you've got sand and cement as well, which you need to mix. Our sand, we we bought two large uh, jumbo bags there. They're about almost a ton. And two bags of sand were 55 pounds each. So that's 110 pounds. And I believe we bought about 10 bags of cement and that was 55 pounds for the 10 bags. So that, that was enough sand and cement to pretty much get us through the build and complete the rest of the block walls. So our engineering bricks are complete now. That's our three courses. Then we'll be ready to do the oversight, which is to pour the concrete slab in the center. We always um, include insulation on the floor and we'll be using 75 millimeter rigid insulation. So we've put down some hardcore here and also we use some sand as well. We use the same sand that we use to lay the bricks. We also um, put in a garden wall in here as well, a block garden wall but um, I'm not going to include this in the costings. I'm just gonna focus on the actual house. So um, you might see that going on, but I'm not gonna add any costings for that. So our foundation is compacted and ready to go. So the next thing we will need to put down will be our damp proof membrane. So that's the large plastic sheet that we put down to prevent moisture coming up from the ground. So as you can see the uh, membrane here. So a, a roll of the membrane big enough to do this area, you're looking um, about uh, 40 pounds, okay? 42 pounds is what we paid for a roll of membrane. So we just lay out our membrane we we'll make sure that it um, goes over the bricks. And in this case, we did have to join two pieces together. Just make sure you overlap them properly. As I said, this is about six and a half by four. So it's a fairly good size. It's going to be broken into actual two rooms. Actually, there'll be a shed side, which will have um, a uh, two doors, a door in the front, access from the garden and another door at the back of the alleyway. And then the main room, which will be an office, will have an access door from the garden side as well as a window. So we're moving on to the next phase here, which is to install our insulation. We've put 75 millimeter rigid board insulation. You can use uh, any of the various brands out there that are designed for this. Um, the 75 millimeters, we purchased about nine sheets and that cost us 53 pounds a sheet. So in total, 477 pounds was the cost for our insulation. 
We also got the same guys back in to do the concrete for us. Again, it just made a lot more sense. And we used the same machine, same process, but this time we used a bit less concrete. And the amount of concrete used for this slab cost us 507 pounds. So a bit less than the last time, but still a fair bit for concrete. So our costs so far are 3,233 pounds and 28 pence. And this has got us up to our concrete slab, essentially, or insulated concrete slab, uh, all our groundwork. Um, this doesn't obviously include any labor. So we've got our blocks delivered now. And the next expense that we have are our damp proof course, which is just the strip um, that goes around the top of the uh, bricks and that will be the barrier between the foundation bricks and the the upper wall blocks so one roll of 100 mil 30 meters was five pounds and 15 pence so we started the block laying this took us a total of 320 blocks and the blocks were one pound 85 total for the blocks were 592 pounds with things like blocks and sand and aggregates and so on it is pretty much regionally dependent as well london has the highest cost for for these materials you may find you may be in the north and you may find you get blocks for say one pound 20 one pound 30 in london we'll pay 185 for the same block from the same company so they are often regionally based that just to give you an um, and heads up as well so anything you build in London unfortunately will be more expensive than anywhere else um, in the rest of the country so we're laying the blocks down um, we also uh, installed a or, or laid bricks on one wall as you can see where it's um, uh, near the neighbor's garage um, the customer wanted that made in bricks um, as to not need rendering there so the bricks, we had a total of 465 bricks on that wall and the total cost was £339.45 for those bricks. Those bricks were uh, about 73 pence each as well. So once the brickwork is completed we also have some lintels as well that go above the door and uh, the door so there's three doors so there'll be three lintels they are about 1200 millimeters wide and we also had a larger lintel which spanned across the large window as well the four lintels cost us uh, 100 pounds Just bear in mind, I'm sure I'm gonna miss out things that we did purchase along the way. Um, I'm not gonna get every single thing, but I'm going to do as much as I can remember. For instance, the three block walls, they did require also two rows of bricks as well to make up to the full height. So we have nine blocks high and then two bricks, uh, rows of bricks on top of the block work. Um, so there was some more bricks there. We used some engineering bricks, but probably not that much more cost. I would estimate somewhere around 30 pounds for those extra courses of bricks. So now we're doing our roofing, a bit of carpentry here. We are doing first our wall plate. 
which is the uh, 2x4 which is going to be sitting on top of the walls once this is fitted we also install in some uh, wall ties as well so this will be tied down to the wall and um, the cost for these was 60 pounds so what we do is we dry fit these cut them all out and you can see how we've made our overlapping joints as well to uh, keep some strength then what we'll do is we will embed them in a layer of cement and just make sure that they are nice and level once these go on then we can uh, install these um, uh, restraints Also another cost you might want to include for, but which is an optional again, is a cement mixer. You may have one, you may not, you may want to hire one, or you may want to mix by hand. Um, if you're building something this size, there's a lot, of, a lot of mixing involved, so it makes sense to have a cement mixer. You might be able to borrow one from a friend. If you have to hire one, just consider the cost of hiring a cement mixer as well for the time that you need it. They are not that expensive um, and in most times you might get away with hiring it for a week. So now we're coming on to our roof joists. Uh, our roof rafters and including the wall plates, we spent about 950 pounds. So timber is astronomically high at the moment. Just to give you an example, one of the rafters that you can see here, which is um, what we call eight by two or 200 millimeters by 50 millimeters. At 4.8 meters, we pay about 50 pounds for one rafter. So you can see how it can add up. I think we had about 17 rafters here. So now we're installing our soffits and our fascia boards. So we have soffits running around the front, 250 millimeter wide vented soffit. We have our fascia boards, all our corners, all nailed in as well. And um, also we have an vent installed at the back. A small vent will be installed in the back here. And all together, fascia board soffits uh, approximately 225 pounds so another uh, bit of timber that we would need for the roof as well is the furrings so these are what creates the fall of the roof and we fix these down on top of the rafters um, to save money we created our own furrings or we made our own furrings um, I do show in our other videos how you can do that how you calculate the fall and how you make your furrings so by making them ourselves we saved a little bit of money um, but in the end it cost us 187 pounds so we also had an internal wall as well and that internal wall, we use these lightweight Fermilite blocks as well. And we use those uh, wall starter kits to bolt them to the existing concrete blocks. So the block work for the internal wall and in starter kits cost us 130 pounds. So now we are decking the roof, we used OSB 
boards for this. Another thing that's shot up in price recently. Our OSB cost us a total of £410. So on this roof we used um, a uh, rubber roof also called EPDM. You can see us just laying out the rubber here. We bought one sheet that covered the entire roof so there's no joints in it. We actually left it overnight um, to rest just so that the, the it could loosen up and get the wrinkles and, and creases out and then the following day we came back to glue it down. Now I bought this all from one supplier which included the sheet of rubber as well as all the trims, edgings, um, nails and gutter strips and stuff like that and everything together came to £722.86. Now we're moving on to doors and windows so we installed the front door of the main room and we also did the window um, from the main for the main room as well, which we purchased from the same place. I believe it might have been Selco. The front door we got was three hundred and seventy-five pounds, and the window, which is an eighteen hundred wide window, we paid four hundred and thirty-five pounds. You can see we're installing the rubber. This adhesive all came as part of that order. Literally everything we needed, we ordered it from one supplier. We found this online and um, the price was, in my view, competitive. All these clips that we that you're watching here, we do have the longer extended versions of these which we recorded every day. So if you want to see more detail of the processes of each of these areas that I'm going through, um, be sure to look at our channel and you'll find uh, the videos where we explain many of the things that we're doing as we're doing it. So the roof is covered now and we've got a uh, window and door so the main uh, room has, has been sealed up and um, we're about to start doing some internal stud work for this area. Now we're about to start the internal battening of the walls. How we're insulating inside this house is we basically are going to fix these 2x2 two two battens to the wall and then we're going to install a 50 millimeter insulation in between. I'm just showing you where our battens are gonna be. There are 400 at 400 centers. Then we put a vapor barrier on and then we install plasterboard on top of that. So all our battens cost us approximately 300 pounds. And that was around 50 battens at about six pound a baton. Again, uh, crazy prices for this stuff compared to earlier this year.
So we're moving on to our insulation, which we used the same type of insulation that we used in the floor. We'll be using for the walls and ceilings. You can save money by using uh, other insulations in your wall and ceilings, such as uh, rock wall or similar types. This is a more expensive, um, uh, however, it does have higher U values. So we're using a rigid board insulation and we're using 50 millimeters in between the joists and rafters. Our insulation for walls and ceilings cost us 800 pounds. That was about 20 sheets at 40 pounds a sheet of 40, 50 millimeter. So you can see that there's been some cabling installed as well for the lights and sockets and so on. Cabling, we came in at approximately 65 pounds. And this is basically for a roll of 2.5 mil for the sockets and a roll of 1.5 for the lights. Now we're installing our vapor barrier. We went through about one roll and a half of vapor barrier and a roll of vapor barrier was 30 pounds. So we spent 60 pounds for the vapor barrier. Now we're onto the plasterboarding. So we're installing the plasterboard on the ceiling first. All the plasterboard that we used on the walls and ceilings was 12 and a half millimeter square edge plasterboard. If you're just gonna do joint filling, you can use tapered edge. If you wanna skim, I would suggest you use the square edge. So our plasterboard all came in at 160 pounds. We also installed um, some OSB on the rear wall of the house. This was just to create a stronger wall because there was going to be a lot of shelving and so on fixed to that wall. So uh, being that the wall is a cavity wall, I guess so it's hollow. You wouldn't need to find the joists. So you can just screw things straight onto that board. I think we used 18 mil in the end uh, on that back wall and the OSB for that was 180 pounds which was four sheets at 45 pounds each. Onto the skimming, plastering, we spent on uh, plaster about 40 pounds for all our uh, multi-finish plaster to skim the room.
So our room is painted and the paint uh, to do the walls and ceiling, including the undercoat, cost us 50 pounds. And also that includes the paint for the skirting boards that we'll be using as well. We won't be including the cost for the flooring um, because the customer supplied the flooring for us and we fitted it for them. Um, obviously your flooring can cost any amount depending on what you want to spend uh, or what type of floor you want to put down. So we'll leave that um, up to you guys to decide and budget for. Um, so there's no costing for the flooring to be included here. So once the flooring is being installed, we install the skirting boards on top after. And our skirting boards cost us £175. That was about five lengths of skirting boards at £35 a length. This is a MDF square edge skirting and it's pre-primed. So we're just installing our lights now. What we do is we make sure we draw out a map on paper exactly where our wires are so that once we uh, paint everything and we cut our holes, we can find exactly where our cables are. So we used uh, spotlights for here. And the lights and the bulbs together cost us 100 pounds. That was about £80 for the lights, a uh, box of 10, I believe. I think we used eight, so there was two spare ones and we also bought a box of 10 dimmable bulbs for £20, so uh, that's the total of £100. Uh, sockets and switches, um, dimmer switch and all these other bits, uh, as well as there's an outside socket um, and uh, another socket in the shed side, an IP66 rated socket. They all came to a total of about £100 as well. So on the shed side of the build, we installed two metal security doors. Uh, we ordered these online and got them delivered. And including all the deliveries, uh, costs, and a few optional items on the locks that we chose, these two doors came up to £660 for the two of them. Another extra that we won't put a cost in for is the radiator or heater or whatever type of heating you want to use in here. This again was provided for us to install. So we don't know the cost for this, um, but obviously you can decide on 
what type of radiator or heater you want this is an electric oil field radiator and this was provided for us and we installed it So we k rendered three walls of this house, the rear wall, one side and the front of the house. We have used uh, about uh, 20 bags in total and the bags are about 14 pounds a bag. So in total we spent 280 on the k rend. We also had to install the beading, which is the corner beads, the uh, bottom uh, trims as well and we spent 123 pounds 50 on all the beadings and edgings that go around the bottom of the building all the corners around the doors the three doors around the windows as well so there's quite a few uh, beading strips to go around So another cost to consider with the KREN, which is not um, a must, but is definitely recommended, is to use the fiberglass meshing in the KREN. So we went through one roll of it, and a roll was 60 pounds for 50 square meters. So one roll should be more than enough to do um, a garden house. One of the last jobs we had to do was to install our guttering. Um, we installed um, square guttering, which is slightly more expensive than the half round ones. Um, but in my opinion, looks better. Our guttering with all our downpipes and brackets and so on cost us 70 pounds. We did connect the water uh, outlet to a, a water butt. This again was provided for us, so we're not sure how much this costs. So is you have the option of if you have somewhere for the water to drain to, or do you want to use some type of tank to collect the water that you can use, you know, to water your garden and so on. We also installed an outside light. Um, this was given to us, so we don't know what the cost for that was, but that's something that you would might need to budget for. It's a good idea to have an external light. So one more thing you will need to consider is your power supply to the house. So you've got some options. Some people are leaning towards uh, solar powered systems, which are self-contained, which you can install on the roof. But the most common way is to supply the house from your main house and install a secondary distribution board in the house. So that you will need to get an electrician in for and um, also to run the armored cable from the house as well. So depending on how far your garden house is from your house will determine how long your cable is and that will also determine how much it's going to cost. So that's something you'll have to um, allow as well. So this is pretty much all the costings for this house really. Um, we didn't include things like screws and all these other little bits and bobs that really do add up. So definitely allow a few extra hundred pounds as well for all your sealants, silicones, screws, wall plugs, nails, stuff like that, that you're gonna need um, that I haven't included. 
but this will give you a general idea anyway of what we spent on this build so i hope it has been helpful for you guys and obviously if you have any other questions let me know i'll try my best to answer them and um if you don't mind give us a like and share this video and also subscribe to the channel and we see you guys on the next video take care